from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Dell Technologies World Digital Experience. Brought to you by Dell Technologies. Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Dell Tech World 2020. This is Dave Vellante. With me is Tom Sweet. He's the EVP and Chief Financial Officer of Dell Technologies. Tom, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on the virtual CUBE. Dave, it's always good to see you and thanks for having me. It's always good to have a conversation with you. I, I actually don't think, I mean, I've spent a lot of time talking to folks from Dell, but I don't think you and I have talked since the pandemic hit. So, you know, what's the macro picture? You know, you and I usually start with the, with the big picture and of course the impact of the, the pandemic and kind of the big waves that you're seeing out there and maybe some of the changes that you're navigating. Well, you know, it's it's been an, an, an interesting year, Dave, as you and I both know, right? And so we, uh, you know, we, we clearly did a number of tactical actions as we worked our way through the pandemic in the early days to make sure our team members could work and were safe and then pivoted to you know, making sure we could, you know, help our customers and get them up and product, productive from a work from home perspective. You know, and so it's, and then we've evolved into then, you know, how do you think your way through um, you know, what's the, what's the work, how do you work your way through, what do you look like on the other end? And so we've been spending a lot of time thinking about investments, where do we put capital to work to position the organization for success post um, COVID, whenever that might be, by the way. And, um, and so that's been the focus in, you know, really spending a lot of time on investment areas. The whole macro dynamic has been interesting, as you know. You know, we we went through this huge trough in Q2 in terms of GDP and global GDP. You know, we're working our way out of that at a macro level. It's 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 very interesting as you go across the globe and look at the various um, countries and regions and how they're recovering at very different paces. You know, the business has been um, an interesting business in terms of what what we do and. Our, our PC business has been quite strong and we've seen a big shift with the work from home and the learn from home dynamics with strong demand from government and education. The infrastructure business, our ISG business has been a bit softer uh, just as, as companies have pivoted. Uh, but all in all, I think we're working our way through it. I, I, I think the actions we took to preserve liquidity and protect the P&L early in the pandemic have, have paid off for us. And uh, we're now focused on how do we position post, um, you know, post when we get through this whole COVID dynamic? You know, it, we, we've both seen a couple of pretty severe downturns. I think about the dot-com downturn and then the financial crisis. I'm actually kind of surprised and impressed the way that, that not just our industry, but, but all industries have worked through this. I guess in hindsight, it shouldn't be surprising given the pace of technology. But I remember those two that I just mentioned, people were flat footed. I remember Ed Zander joking when he was at Sun, anybody want to buy a server? And it was just, there was, business wasn't being transacted. And, and that's different this time around. Uh, industries have, have responded and you know, technology of course is, is at the heart of that. But you know, was, were you surprised at all by the, by the pace of, I don't want to say recovery, but resiliency, I guess. Uh, a, a little bit, to be honest, Dave. I mean, I mean, it does highlight the fact that at the heart of what most companies are, you know, are doing these days is technology and how they evolve their business model, how to how they interact with their customers. And so, clearly, if you you think all the way back with our industry, Dave, back to the early two thousands, and we had a with a bump with the the dot com bust, and people shut down IT spending, right. you know, and. Now, I don't think you can really do that if you think about where you need to be from a business model perspective. So I think there's been a maturation and a recognition that technology plays a key role, but it, it, but it has been surprising about how fast it's pivoted, to be honest with you, in the sense of, you know, think of the very distinct cycles as we've come through the COVID dynamic. Big PC demand early innings, you know, we saw some recovery in the ISG spend in Q2 in our quarter, second quarter, a little bit better than Q1, you know, as companies readjusted spend. And so it's the organizations across the, in our customer base have, have adjusted quite well. Clearly there's vertical implications. If you're in the airline industry or some of the hospitality, you're, you're being a bit more cautious, right? But all in all, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey for all of us. Yeah, I mean, at the height of the pandemic, you saw, you know, some people taking actions, obviously they were freezing IT projects, they were starting to do layoffs or, or freezing new hires. 
That's moderated based on the data yeah. that we've seen. I just published the other day that, that we're starting to see some you know, slow thawing of that tight grip uh, on IT. Uh, what are you seeing both externally and maybe as the CFO, what are you doing internally? <laughs> well, if you talk to my CIO, she probably gives you a different answer, David, <laughs> than what I'm about to give you, because you know, I'm an extraordinarily balanced guy in my point of view, right? But, uh, <laughs> You know, look, I think externally we're seeing targeted investments happening by customers that are moving projects forward. I think there's a bit of caution. And I do think this whole evolution of how do customers want to consume IT is evolving. You know, is it a CapEx spend? Is it a, is it a financing structure? Is it a, as a service and con consumption model type? You know, so those, the economic models around IT are changing and evolving. Uh, but I think overall, what we've seen is some level of, um, you know, cautious, uh, you know, cautiousness, but yet, you know, targeted investment, uh, you know, with our customers. And, and and internally, quite frankly, we're continuing to invest. We have capabilities that we need to evolve. You know, we're working. We're very focused on transformational projects that enable our customers to do business with us easier. On the other hand, we're being very tight around. What do I need to do from, you know, some of those old run the business type spend and how do I streamline that while still supporting the business properly? So it's, it's a bit of a balance right now. Yeah, and you obviously have the advantage of a large portfolio, parts of your portfolio are exposed, like you said, some of the on-prem stuff, but then you've got the, the, certainly the laptop and the work from home shift. A couple of questions there. One is, first of all, you know, Dell was largely a, a, a larger work from home culture than the average. The average, let's say the average is, I don't know, 15 to 20% of, of employees work from home. You're probably higher than that. And, and, but now we're seeing that people are expecting at least double that long-term are, are going to work from home. So you were, you know, somewhat maybe more prepared than, than most. Uh, but then again, you have that tailwind on one side of your business, your supply chain, did very well, unlike you know some of your competitors that we saw, or you know early in the pandemic, you know. So it seems like you've you've managed that pretty well. Um, maybe your thoughts? Yeah, look, I, we do have a culture that provided flexibility. We've been on this journey for roughly ten years about having our people have some flexibility in where they work, and so we had roughly 20, 25,000 people working remotely or some in, or in some hybrid fashion before the pandemic, you know, obviously right now, you know, 90% of our workforce is, is remote. We think, you know, post pandemic, you know, that it's going to look like something like, you know, uh, you know, 45, 50% of the organization's probably going to be in some sort of re hybrid or remote setting. And, you know, and that's the feedback our team members are giving us. And, uh, and so, you know, we have been fortunate to be able to, to have the culture that pivoted quite frankly, quite quickly, I should say, as we worked our way through this. From a supply chain perspective, look, our supply chain has done, team has done a terrific job on sort of navigating the, 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 the barriers and the challenges put up by a COVID-19 crisis. But, you know, I'll go farther back, Dave, you and I talked about this before. Think about what's happened with our supply chain and, and global supply chains over the last couple of years, and whether it's the US-China dynamic and and how do you, you work your way through that, you know, and how do you ensure continuity of, uh, of supply for our customers? And so that, that team's done a great job. You know, we have long-term relationships with many of our key suppliers, which has been helpful. And, and, you know, as you know, we have one of the largest, if not the largest technology uh, buy in the industry. So it has helped us in terms of making sure we have capability and availability for our customers. Let's talk a little bit about some of the, the, the strategy and the value levers that you guys talk about. You, you've always hit on industry consolidation, you know, integration, delevering. We've seen the 13D with the, the moves you're going to make with, with VMware. How, how have things changed there? Has the pandemic changed your thinking at all? And how are you doing in terms of those, turning those knobs? You know, first it has not changed our thinking in the sense of some of those key, you know, long-term value creation activities we've been focused on and platforms we've been focused on around, hey, you know, we we know that in the in where we where we sell, where we compete, that the industry is not a you know a rapidly growing industry. And so you grow organically by consolidation and share gain, and that's what we've been focused on. You couple that with the, the innovation engine we have with um, Dell Technologies and our, 
and including our, you know, with and when you include in that VMware, you know, we've got you know an extraordinary patent portfolio, and we've got these what we think are unique solutions and capabilities. So we're pushing hard on the innovation engine, and then you couple that with the capital work we've been doing around how do you do, you know, delivering the balance sheet, getting the company repositioned back towards investment grade, and we've made really good progress on that. You know, we'll pay down $5.5 billion of debt this year, uh, which will, again, position us closer to those investment grade like metrics. And so those those platforms are, are you know, uh, pillars, if you will, of our strategy haven't changed. But in addition to that, you know, we are looking at where do you grow and how do you continue to grow at a pace, perhaps at GDP, GDP plus which is sort of where we think, you know, is the long-term framework we've got to be thinking about. So that's where you get into these adjacencies, like how do you how do you further drive in the, in the multi-cloud, hybrid cloud? How do you think about the opportunity with telco, with the 5G rollout that's happening across the globe and the investment that's going to go into that? The whole edge computing, the edge cloud is of interest to us. And so there's a number of these emerging areas that we think are pretty interesting and they're adjacent and, and, and fit nicely into what we do as a, you know, as quite frankly, that essential infrastructure company. So that's the focus we've been driving about. How do we set up both continue on our core mission of consolidation, innovation and, and delivering as well as how do you set up some of these growth vectors as we move forward? Well, and one of the other late levers is you, have, you filed a 13D. I don't know what you can share with us. Some of it gets confused how much is fact sometimes and how much is you know, speculation. But I mean, I've said that it appears that one of the things that you're looking at is creating an equilibrium in, in terms of the balance sheets of both companies, uh, keep getting them both at investment grade. What, what can you tell us about um, what you're thinking there? Yeah, look, you know, obviously we did file a 13D in mid-July, which essentially said we were contemplating whether, you know, a potential spin of our 81% ownership interest out to the Dell Technology shareholders. And so we're continuing to work with um, uh, the VMware team on, you know, what does that look like with a couple of uh, fundamental principles, which is, hey, you know, we have both benefited from this better together story. And so how do we, uh, keep that uh, differentiation in some type of a long-term operating agreement or operating framework. But at the same point in time, you know, you know, do the potentially look at a spin that unlocks value for both sets of shareholders of both companies, right? VMware gets additional flexibility from a from a strategic perspective. They don't have the Dell balance sheet, Dell Technologies balance sheet sitting on top of them. From a Dell Technologies perspective, you know, we presumably as part of this would be some type of a dividend stream bought by VMware out to its share, shareholders. We get the opportunity to accelerate our delivering story and get back closer or to investment grade or right at investment grade, depending upon how this all works out. So we think there's a number of, of really interesting value levers here, right? At the same point in time, wanting to protect what's been really good about the relationship and, and the way we've gone to market, the way we've innovated. And so that's the balance we're walking right now. And, and you know, there's work to do as we work with VMware to see if this makes sense, can we get it done? Uh, but, but we're early innings and, and we may end up not doing anything, honestly, but I mean, that's, that's sort of the thinking that we're working through right now. Well, it's an interesting thought exercise, if nothing else. And so, but, I mean, I mean, I, I look at it when you when you combine Dell and EMC when you did the acquisition. Now you became VMware's you know most important partner, just even if it's in terms of revenue, because you, know, you got the massive distribution channel. So there's there's that inherent value in that relationship, you know, independent of anything else. The flip side of that is 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 you know VMware has been you know an awesome acquire of companies, uh, you know, inorganic R&D, if you will, and some pretty cool R&D as well. So it's going to be really interesting to watch how that plays out. And I think we, you know, we'll wait and see you know, at the comment. You know, we're, we're working through it and we'll see where we, where we end up. But, uh, you know, you've highlighted a couple of great points. I mean, our, you know, our go-to-market reach you know, is, is, is extraordinary. And VMware has benefited from that. We've benefited from the VMware relationship with 
some of their technologies as we've integrated those into our combined solution. So it's been a it's been a win win, and that's the balance of how do you keep that for, as well as you know, quite frankly, provide some value back to your shareholders. Well, we've seen that, you know, not just the, the, the uplift of the market, but, but clearly the speculation has, has caused some, some uh, you know, unlocking of value and may bring some others from the sidelines. But I wanted to ask you about, I mean, I've been talking about this automation mandate. I think there was one, certainly there was one before the pandemic and now it's even accentuated. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you're applying automation to, to your business and maybe what you're seeing with customers? how that could affect, you know, the long-term productivity of your business, maybe new ways to work. What can you tell us there? Yeah, look, I mean, we're, we have a, 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 a pretty significant automation agenda within Dell Technologies, both from an internal perspective, as well as the automation and, and AI and, and machine learning capabilities we're embedding into our solutions to help our customers uh, drive their automation agendas. Internally, what we've been focused on is how do I simplify? How do I take complexity out? You know, how do I provide a, a richer, more interactive experience with our customers? How do I lean into uh, service needs, service capabilities, all those areas that are ripe for automation? And, and, and in my finance organization alone right now, I think I have over 125 automation projects going right now as we, as we look at how we simplify. From a customer perspective, as I go out and talk to customers, they're also doing much the same thing that we're doing, which is how do they take uh, complexity out of their process? How do they streamline? How, are they, how do they drive responsiveness and customer uh, you know, customer uh, experience at a much higher level. And so it's all, you know, it's all walking down this pathway of process simplification, automation, which includes technology investment, obviously, which is, you know, helpful from our perspective. And so there's a agenda out there as, as we talk with customers in terms of, and a commonality as we talk with customers. And then the other point I'd give you, Dave, is that just as you think about, you know, as I talk to my peers out in the industry, I mean, many of us are driving automation agendas, have a lot of that, you know, in, with focused on taking touch out, uh, enrichment of job and capabilities or, or in, in, enrichment of, you know, we've got to build skill sets to drive that. So there's a big theme across the industry in this area. And, and I think it's going to do nothing but accelerate quite frankly, you know, as we, as we work our way forward. Yeah, I've talked to a bunch of customers on this topic and, and it seems to be sort of three paths actually. One path is there's a, there's a lot of low hanging fruit and easy wins and, 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 but the problem with that is a lot of times it's just paving the cow path with automation. You know, the other is you got to do the hard work of really digging into the process. And the third that I've seen, which is kind of interesting to, which is kind of what you're alluding to is you free up you know, some of the mundane tasks and, and you let the people who really understand the process rethink that process and then you go into a deeper automation agenda. And that, and that seems to, you know, that'll turn millions into billions. That's the value add there, Dave. I mean, it's that, that, that third con, you know, framework that you laid out, which is you, you have to do the work around process, but then again, how do I then, you know, over time as I, as I have the experts help us on the automation capabilities, once we've identified what are the appropriate processes or functions to be automated, how do you then pivot resource to more higher value add activity across the organization? And, and that's, that's, you know, when you, when you do that, you unlock, I think a, a terrific value creation opportunity, which we're very focused on right now. Yeah, and, and I know there's always a big concern about jobs with automation, but the reality is, is if you look at the, U, the data from the US and Europe over the last couple of decades, the productivity trend is, is clear, it's, it's gone down. And if you think about the big problems that we face in the world, whether it's, climate change or national debt or healthcare or you know, you know, hunger, you just can't throw people at that problem. You, yeah. you, you got to have a combinations of, of people and, and machines. And so while there may be you know, a short-term impact, I'm kind of an optimist and I know you are as well. No, it's, uh, you, know, you know, obviously this is a tough time for a lot of businesses and customers as we work our way through the pandemic. And, and including, you know, and, and, and some have adjusted their workforce, uh, you know, and 
Part of it's from the economic reality, but part of it is also a skill set dynamic as they're reshaping workforce. And but I do think automation plays a key role in how do you enable skill sets to evolve and 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 get again um, reallocated to other value creation activities. So there there is you know unfortunately or, or probably going to be some short term disruptions in certain areas. But on the other hand, if you think about the long term gain and the productivity gains that that we all need to drive, you know you can't do it without automation and thinking your way through streamlining and taking complexity out of the organization. So my, my last question has come back the productivity. We're talking about work from home. Do you feel like you've had a bump in productivity as a result? You know, maybe there was some short-term disruption, but, but you know, what's your, what's your data or your gut say in terms of the impact on, on your organization? And then maybe on your, your customers as well. In terms of the you know, I think it's been fairly similar between us and our customers. I was concerned when we went to a work from home back in March that we were going to lose productivity. And, you know, and I thought it was going to be a productivity drain, you know, as, as our team members were juggling work and, and, and their family dynamics and situation is and, and obviously in the middle of that or in the early innings of this COVID crisis. What we have seen, in fact, is actually we've seen productivity improve pre-COVID to where we are today. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're giving our team members one flexibility on how they do their job, but we're giving them time back. They're, they're not commuting. There's less um, meetings that are consuming time, um, you know, and the responsiveness and the capabilities of the org are such that we're moving through decisions and projects, I think at a faster pace, quite frankly. And so it's been an interesting, and I think to me, a bit of a surprising result from what we've seen. As I talk to customers and I'm the executive sponsor on a number of extraordinary, you know, very large uh, multinational uh, customers, it's pretty much the same response, you know, the similar experience, right? That they've seen similar results that we have. So. Now, what you don't want this to be is that you're doing that on the backs of the team members working 15 or 16 hours a day. You've got to find the right balance. But the fact that we're giving them flexibility to jump out during the middle of the day to, to attend to some family members or help with you know, their children's learning, and then they're back in maybe a little bit later during the day. I mean, I, I do think that we've enabled a culture that's pretty interesting that is paying dividends for us right now. Yeah, it's ironic that this hit at the, at the beginning of, uh, of 2020 is uh, it's, it's clear that it's going to be a, a different decade than it was last decade, which I guess every decade is, Tom. <laughs> Tom Sweet, it was great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks so much. Always a, a pleasure speaking with you. Always, a good, always great to see you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching our coverage, theCUBE's coverage of Dell Tech World 2020. We're right back right after this short break. <laughs>